boxes. Do we got some of them? We're going to take some of them. We're going to load them to go boxes. Okay. Maybe take them over to, and let somebody else have a meal of them. So I'm afraid so we just want to share it with everybody else. So, and if you know somebody that wants to come, that you would like to come, uh, bring them with you. Yeah. Bring them with you. If you know somebody that, that uh, you know, I've invited probably 50, 60 people. Uh, if we get 20 out of that, hey, hey we, we've done something so far. So <coughs> but I'm excited about it and see what the Lord's going to do. Uh, Tim and Pete, I need to talk to Stephen today sometime. Uh, decide which way we're going to go and what we're going to do. Huh? Chris Tom, Grimm, okay. Chris Tom, Grimm, man. Skip it. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Today, the title of my sermon is The Christian <coughs> Enjoy. Oh, happy day. Uh, you know, I want to start out by saying this that there was a little cliche going around years ago that went something like this. Uh, if you're a Christian, you ought to tell your face about it because you don't act like that you know it. Uh, if you smile, maybe somebody will believe you. <laughs> so I want to say that if you're a Christian, you ought to display the joy of the Lord in your life. And happiness is based on what happens. Joy is what God has already done for us. So there's a difference in that. I'm not happy uh, because something happened to me. I have the joy of the Lord because my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, and I can rejoice about that. We can rejoice about it. If we had nothing else to talk about, we could rejoice about that for eternity. That God has saved us, and we get to spend eternity with our Father. Amen. Oh, my glasses are work right here. Okay. Well, I want to thank God for a brand new second hand truck. Yeah. I got a new truck too. What kind is it? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> 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 the cheap the uh, so my son, when I took my truck from my body, I'm taking my son. Yeah. He said, Dad, I cannot believe that you're going to buy this kind of truck. Yeah. He said, You've got to guess these your whole life. Judy said, Dad, the same thing. He said, You've got to guess these your whole life. Judy said the same thing. Uh, then my wife reminded me yesterday, she was telling somebody, she said, my husband, uh, she said, I don't know what to think about it. She said, said he was ever living in a subdivision and we bought a house in a subdivision. And he said he would never drive a Dodge or buy a dog, and he bought a Dodge. You got smarter than age. <laughs> 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 and I love him too. <laughs> But anyway, it, it's a good view, so we're going to move on. And, and, uh, I want to ask you a question to start with, and it's this. What has joy to do with being a Christian? I have seen people that are Christians that you would never know it unless they told you. Because they look like they got a scowl on their mouth the whole time and on their face, and they wear it around all the time. Um, I just want you to know I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Why don't you tell me something that I can believe about you? If you're going to heaven, why don't you show it? Man, glory to God. When I got saved, everybody knew it. And the man told me the man I got saved, he said, I don't go to heaven about it, they need some plan. What happened to you? Because you don't want to talk about it. And that was really, really good information. And I did what he said. I didn't say a word about yeah. it. In less than three or four days, people began to come to me and say, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. I mean, people that were the bosses in, at, at, in, at the line I worked on. What happened to you? I said, what do you mean what happened to me? Something's happened to you because you're not the same. What do you mean I'm not the same? I'm the same. No, you're not. No, you, you're just not. Your demeanor has changed. And we were like, no, what happened to you? Has there been something that happened to you that I'm missing or something happened to you? And then I would say, yeah, I got say, well, the guys I used to play cards with, two of them worked on that line. 
I want them to ask me if we ever Friday night we used to go out and have a few. You had to be my own deal. You know what that means? We play cards on Friday night. Be my own deal. Bring your own green. It's either have to find whiskey or whatever you want to drink. And I guarantee you, not root beer. But anyway, <laughs> when I when he said he said, I'm gonna have a beer. I said, uh, why? He said, you feel this different. He said, man, you, he said, there's something, something's really changing you. He said, what the, what's up with you, man? I said, oh, I got to say it. He said, you what? Oh, man, I can't believe you did that. <coughs> he wasn't glad for me because he broke up the car game. Guess what? I'm still serving God. I want to be one of these athletes on the face of the earth. You know, because he's been, he has been hurt by people in the church. There's a lot of people out there like that. There's a lot of people who've been hurt, frustrated, and upset. I can't tell. It doesn't mean you don't hurt people, but that just means you're mature. You need to mature. All of us need to mature. But you know what? The joy of the Lord comes the day you get saved. The joy of the Lord ought to be, man, my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. I'm so thankful for that. So what does joy mean in a Christian's life? It means that, you know, when you're a happy person and an excited person about knowing the Lord and that, that God has saved you and you're really thankful about that. And, and you don't have to go around with a scowl on your face all the time. Man, in Walmart. I, my thing about the Walmart is that when I go to Walmart, even today, with all the masks on, all that stuff, you know, and all the way I'm going in, I say, yeah, how are you all doing? Make all the people working at the door out there that don't want to be there, passing out masks, I'll make them talk to me. And when I come out of Walmart, people were there walking in, this girl walking up like this, playing with somebody. So I said, hey, how you doing there? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing fine. How are you? It's okay, good. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and we, and you, this, this, this. you're the one because of batteries. <laughs> if somebody wore because of batteries, you, not me. So, and you know, it, it, it don't cost any more to be bold and share a spot and ask people how they're doing. I had a great tomorrow Walmart yesterday and you said what she was in batteries and I said I run out of it from the double A. So I ran down to Walmart. And they're right there behind the cashiers and so I'll pick them up. And I'm the fourth in line back right there. There was somebody already checking out. And there was a young girl behind her. Um, and then there was another couple behind them and behind the next one. So that lady left and the other girl there and she looked me up and she said, Oh, I don't I forgot my money. I'm going to go out and get it. She said, can you hold on? Oh, God, I'm sure that hit the coin lines today. <laughs> Never hurry. And it's awful hard to be excited <laughs> when you're stopped from being impatient. Uh -huh. Oh, I can't act like I want to act. I mean, once I want to do it, so about 15 minutes went by. And I said, girl, I said, that I boss somewhere. Uh, she said, oh no. She said, that girl said, she forgot it. She'll be right back. I said, I look at me. I said, she's not coming back. People are not going to park a lot to the other five minutes. She's not coming back. She said, well, she said, I got all the time. I said, you know what's the hammer to say? She said six dollars a month. I said, you know what? I'll pay for it. Got down and said, you know what? I'll pay for it. I said, well, you know so we got to get this line moved. I don't know how to pay for that. It's worth six dollars to me. It's line moved. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at least, are you going to pay for this? She said, you want to pay this? I said, yes, ma'am. I'm going to walk in there. Card in, pay for it. She said, what? I said, just put it over. If she comes back, give it to me. Come back, you just lost it. That's all. So, and I said, Oh, by the way, I said, Don't you tell her something? She's the one who said, Tell her that the Lord has blessed you. She said, Really? And I looked behind and said, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we followed us, we were in line. But you know what? I can 
Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a and I, you know, the devil puts circumstances in our way as a Christian to change the way we think in the situation. So we'll be focused on this, the circumstances and situation that we're in, and we forget who we are and what we are. And so we let the circumstances dictate to us how, how we feel. And really, it's the enemy trying to get us off a target of the assignment that God has put us in, and if we can take, we lose some of that assignment, we're, we're doing it, and we will be disappointed because we didn't do it, and guess what? It was just, it was all our job. We just, really, better. Is this thing dead or a hammer? No. Is it dead now? No. 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 Sure it's it's but anyway, so joy is connected to, I told you last night, I said, I just found out tonight that joy is connected, joy and peace are connected to hope. Yeah. And by the way, we're going to cover some of this here this morning. But the Bible says that if we got joy in our lives and we're excited about things and the peace of God reigns and rules in us, it causes our hope to, to go up. There's hope for things that we don't see hope in when we have the joy of the Lord about us. If you don't have any joy, you can't. It, it's hard for us to believe God for anything. Nehemiah, throw it up there. <coughs> Nehemiah uh, said this. He said, "Then Nehemiah, who was the governor and editor of the priest and the scribe and the Levites who talked to people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Don't mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping when." They heard the words of the law. The next verse says, He then said to them, Go eat the fat, drink of the sweet, send portions to him who is not prepared to go to Walmart. For this day is holy to our Lord, and don't be grieved, for the joy of the Lord <coughs> is your strength. Now, the, the Amplified Translation uses it's your, uh, your strength and your stronghold. Uh, I want to read it in the uh, Message Bible, but I couldn't find my Message Bible last night. And so my next door neighbor, I was out there, and I said, you want to go to church? I lost my Message Bible, and I have to find it. He said, yeah. So he wrote down and looked at the place. And uh, my Bible, I couldn't find it. I don't work that. You said, you might give it to somebody. And I said, like, I did give it to somebody. I just came in for a gate So, I'll give me another one today, sometime today, because I don't want to look there. So, hearing the word of the Lord produced in them a joy, which resulted in the, a strength for them to have victory in their lives. Can I add that for that right there? That the joy of the Lord became a strength for them that they didn't have before. They were excited to be able to hear that and do that, and to hear. Listen, they got excited about just hearing the word of the Lord. Amen. You Listen, you think about this. In those days, people didn't have, everybody had a New American Standard or a New King James Bible or a King James, or, you know, in, in the translation, they what they those out. They had a scroll. Yes, right. And they only had one. They didn't have many copies. And so the priest uh, the man of God held that, and they would stand and sometimes read all day long. Yeah. You can't find a Christian today that will read the book all day long. You know why? Because we're saturated with the Word of God. We just we hear it anytime we want to. So you know it doesn't mean what it meant to those people. 
But when they heard the word, they were so excited because they hadn't heard it. And they were so excited that a joy rose up on the inside of them just to hear the word of God. Now, I remember when I first got saved, when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what happened to me in my life? We couldn't wait to get to church. There was no such thing as sitting on the back seat. If you got there late, you had to sit in the back because all the front four, five, six rows were taken up by people who were hungry and wanted to, they wanted to be right there what's going on in church. If somebody needed prayer, listen, four or five people jumped out of the seat and went to pray for them up there. Pastor never had to ask me anything. Why? So excited to be there. So excited to see God do something. I watched a, a Christian church turn full gospel. It called to split. Add to that. Well, there are some people in there that they want to go believe anything except what their church doctrine said. And so they left and started with another church. Said, you can have this one, we'll start another one. And they did. And you know what? We just took it over. Hallelujah. And God began to do things every Sunday. I couldn't wait. Every Sunday night. We met Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night was uh, go out and witness night. And Saturday night was the night they just come together and prayed. That church, every Saturday night, there were 10, 15, 20 people in there crying out to God for the Sunday morning service. We have revival all the time. You want to see God do something? Because people in that day had heard and saw God do something, and, and God was so exciting, and, and, and Christians were so full of joy that they couldn't wait to get together with other people and fellowship with them. Like on Wednesday night, people meeting in your house, fellowshipping. It's just a good thing to do. And besides that, they can bring stuff to ours. <laughs> oh, and cakes, you brought a cake one night. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Joel. But anyway, uh, it just... It's just good to be able to do that. Why? Well, this stuff uh, produces things in us that we don't know about. Now, joy, I'm going to tell you what joy is. Joy is an outward expression of an inward delight. It means to have delight or rejoice. Now, the sound of joy, anybody know what that is and what the sound of joy is? Laughter. Laughter, that's right. It's laughter. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, my God. 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 Romans seven twenty two goes there. I got to move on. Good luck with that. Oh, friend, Lord. Paul said, now, Paul was having, and I talked to you about this. You know, this was a very difficult time for him. But what's happened is the Holy Spirit had him to write this because he's experienced some of the same thing or has. And he said, I joyfully concur with the law of God. And he talked about the inner man, or he said, concerning the inner man, uh, the Amplified translation says, concerning the sinner. <coughs> the, the man on the inner part of me. Uh, and the, the, go ahead, the next one said, or was that the only one? Is that the only one Okay. So what, he was having the time in his life because he said, you know, I feel like I'm not getting accomplished what I need to get accomplished. I don't do what I need to do. And as a result of it, uh, he said, I, they're, I'm torn about. So his flesh was having a heyday with me. That he wanted to do things. How many of you know that, that Paul was the number one Puba, uh at, in, the, in the New Testament where, where he was at that particular time about 
the, the church being uh, established and all that stuff, Paul, God called him and said that he was going to use him. And the Apostle Paul, listen, he was the number one uh, person that the, of the Jewish church. And he was going around, and he was killing people who were Christians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was put to death and had him killed. And he got <coughs> saved him on the road and knocked him off his horse. The light, the light knocked him off his horse and he fell to the ground. How would you like for that being to hit you? Hello. And as a result of you know, and he still had his place to deal with. And look here, he's learning like the rest of us did. He said, and so I joyfully concur with the, the law of God in the inner man. The word is able to change me. And he realized that, and he wrote that down in Romans chapter 7. You can read the rest of that chapter there. Matter of fact, y'all read Romans all the time. Probably. It's just full of stuff that can, can make you what you, not, what you need to be. Okay. Now, um, the born again or new person that Paul had become, he still had to learn like the rest of us. Just because he was a religious man doesn't mean that, that he had it all together. Not at all. Now, the Word of God produces in us a joy, no matter what the circumstances are, because uh, I know who I am. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 says, But thanks be to God, who always leads me in triumph in Christ, and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Him all the time in every place. Uh, have you ever been around some Christians and the aroma was not sweet? Yep. It looked like an old sourness. What my mom is called. You act like an old sour. Yeah. Quit that. My goodness. My grandmother. Bless her heart to you. My grandmother. <laughs> My wife got out of this a little while after we were married. Judy was trying to reach across the table one morning to get something. And she told Dr. Boyd, she said, You black eyed pants. He said, You're reaching get that mouse steady with this boy. I wasn't there. But I, <coughs> she really ought to be thankful I wasn't there. <laughs> But anyway, one of my siblings told my mother about it when she came home. Ooh, it got ugly. My mother told her, you go to your room and don't come out like me. It was her mother. Right. Go to your room and stay there and I'll let you know when you can come out. <laughs> And I told my brother, I said, well, didn't you say something to her? He said, I'm not like you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, sometimes you just have the sweet aroma. I don't know what I would have done if I'd been a Christian <clears throat> if she acted that way. But my grandmother said she was saved. I know the saved people act ugly sometimes. They just do. All of us, how many of you have been ugly since you've been a Christian? How many of you have lost your smile since you've been a Christian? Fires, fires, peace on fire. Anyway, well, let me get, get going here because I got to get new chasing back here. I got to do this. Now, 2 Corinthians 2 14 still belongs to me as a believer. God always leads me in triumph. And if I don't have it, guess what happened? It's because I did not listen to the leadership of the Holy Spirit because he's leading me away from something that's bad into a situation that's good. And I wouldn't have it because I want to be stubborn and, and, and get a sour face. Have you ever known children, parents, have you ever known any of your children that love to pound? Yep. Do I understand that word pounding? No. I want much of a pound. <coughs> but I was allowed now. I got in trouble for that one. Talking back to my mother when I should have. I was crazy enough not to talk to my father. 
put on what he would do. So he would not put up with that. So anyway, my mother, I talk about her, and she got pretty nasty sometimes. Uh, my wife knew my mother. And I was 16 years old, and our, our porch was about that high off the ground. It blocks the concrete. And my mother said, back her like this, and she's facing me. And she said, to, and I corrected my mother, and she stood up and slapped me and knocked me off the porch backward, and I fell on the ground, and it knocked the breath out of me. And I said, <laughs> She said, you died, but she said, I'll, I'll forgive you if you don't mind me. How many she would? <laughs> she made a believer out of me. I, I couldn't even breathe. And how would you help me breathe? She helped me breathe. Uh -huh. Turn around walk off. <laughs> I really felt love then. <laughs> Sometimes we take that and some people let her stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to go to John 15, I'm really rushing to this cup. Thank be to God, no always leads us in, in triumph in Christ. Now listen to this. this. This is a good scripture here. I love this scripture. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. People, disciples have. Now, is that for us today or not? Yes. As a believer, is that for you? Yes. Really? Some of you all don't believe that. Yes. What's the name that we're supposed to use when we approach the Father and ask Him for something? What name is that? The name of Jesus. I hear people say, God, we ask in your name. Nope, the name okay. of Jesus. Really? You mean to tell me that if I pray, God, I ask you in your name, that it wouldn't get done? No. Mm -hmm. You've got to go through the Son to get the Father. That was narrow minded. Yeah. But that's what the book says. Right. He said, use my name. What is his name? Jesus. His name is Jesus. That's right. I know some people are afraid to say Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we ask in your name. We ask this prayer in, 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 in your name, Lord. I know what he said. Jesus. It irks me when I hear people, men of God, when they end the prayer with God asking your name. The mother, the mother. All right, we're on the next Look what he said. If the word finds its place in you, and the word of God will, the more words you have on the inside of you, the more apt you are to express the joy of the Lord because God's word produces joy in us. Now, look what he said in, in uh, Jeremiah 15 16. Is that where we're going here? Jeremiah 15 16. He said, Your word were found. And I consumed them, and your word became for me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I have been called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. When I looked at it, I thought, man, one word. The word of God, I received it as it was food for my very being. It was something that would sustain me. Your words were found, and they were good words. And so I took them in and made them part of me. That's what he's saying to us today. Yeah. When you find the word of God and it, it really lights you up, then don't get rid of it. It's there for you to use all the time. Once you have an experience with a word, then that, that scripture belongs to you. If you never have an experience with any scripture, you just read it and you don't know what it means or you never associate with it, or, or put it to use in your life, it don't belong to you. Why? Because you don't understand it. Uh -huh. You need wisdom and revelation concerning that word in your life so you can use that word. Uh -huh. Well, my wife, uh, the testimony she gave about my two sons about what they never tried to do to them earlier uh, last week, but one of my sons, uh, she said, she was reading one day in, in, in the Gospel of John, and she said she read something. And she was just going down there reading. You know how people read sometimes. Just, you know, you're reading. This so I say, oh, I was like, yeah, I'll read it. And she said, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit stopped her and told her to go back. And so she said, okay. So she said, I'll read it again. So she read that again. And she said, 
right again. And she didn't get it. And the third time she read it, she caught it. And what you tell them exactly what you told what she yeah. said said you stand up. So you can I'm gonna stand right here. Hug me right there. Ooh. Here we go. Absolutely. Well, tell them, tell them. Uh, my son John was not serving the Lord and he was not doing things that were pleasing to the Lord and um, we loved him, he loved us, but it was a difficult time in our lives with him. Anyway, um, you know, read that scripture, it was about the birth of Jesus and John the Baptist, and the scripture said his name is John, what manner of child shall be for the hand of God's on his head. The Lord took me back to that scripture three times and I said, I finally got it. I said, I'm sorry, Lord, I don't need to be dense, but I didn't know what you're trying to tell me. But, he's, and, but he told me to say that about my son, John. So I did it. And I said, all right. Um, so I began to say that over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's what you got to do. Say it and say it and say it and say it until it gets into your heart. <laughs> so I did. John came in the door not too long after that. I said, hey, come in here, baby. I'll just talk about you. He said, you were what? I said, God told me to tell you that he's got his hand on, it, on your head and he's going to turn you in the direction that he wants you to go. And I did. Yeah, no. Yeah, you know how they get, get you know that the reaction you get from them. Anyway, God did turn it. And within two weeks, he was totally, his life was totally turned around. And he was back on the straight and narrow. And I had my boy back. Amen. We need to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Uh, we, we need to have an ear to hear what he's saying. I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about this ear right here. Hear with our hearts what he's saying. And do what he said in order for it to turn out like he wants it to turn out in our life. Now, uh, my question is, how do I get joy? In my life, or I'm so glad you asked me. You just receive it. You do. How do I receive it? Well, it belongs to you already. In Galatians chapter 5, in verse 22, I'm go. But he said, But I say to you, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Now, we're, we're going to get there. And the birth, that was said in 16 7. And for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the thing yeah. that you please. Go to the next one. Fine. Galatians 5 22. Drop down to 22. 225. Got it? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, temperance, gentleness, self-control, and yes, self there is no law. How do I get joy? I'm sorry. I mean to tell you that you already have it. Amen. Come on, that's good. You have to work and not have it. Joy. You have to let the circumstances of the day dictate to you how you feel because when you get up in the morning, joy belongs to you. Hallelujah. That day. Amen. Praise God. Right. Because the Holy Spirit, when He came into you, made His abide with you when the Father and the Son came to live in us with the Holy Spirit, He brought joy with Him. Right. He is joy. And he has given, has given us all the manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit, and we can use them as often as we want because they belong to us. Right. If you don't have joy, it's because you chose not to. Right. Amen. Listen up. I said if you don't have it, it's because you don't want to. Yes. God do not make you have joy. That's right. I was talking to John the other day, and he said, Lord, just make this go away. I said, God, you make it go away. How many of you know that God don't make things go away from you? That's right. Amen. You have authority on that level. That's right. You have, you have to stop it. Amen. 
True. You want to quit drinking too much coffee? Then decide to do it. Oh, God, just take his coffee away. No, he's not going to come down and take the pot off. He's not going to break your cup. <laughs> Hello? Am I talking to anybody? Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. You have to do it yourself, lazy. Right. Uh-huh. You have to do what, what the Word says for you to do. He's not going to do it. Look here, he's your father, not your babysitter. Right, come on. If you think that you that he's babysitter, throw your pacifier away. Matt. And your rat bird. Oh. <laughs> 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 on here. Yeah. So in Romans 8, the reason I share this with you here, in Romans 8, well, go back, go back to that. Go back, please go back to that. I won't forget that. Now, those who belong to Christ have done what? With his passions and desires? Yeah. The flesh? Yeah. Watch this now. Listen to me. A long time ago, before I learned anything about this, I used to believe that you had to crucify the flesh every day of your life. <laughs> Jesus only crucified his flesh one time. He said, you are crucified with Christ. Yep. Does anybody in this house know what the word crucify means? Yeah. It don't just mean a little thing. It means to D-I-E. Die. Yeah. Die. Yeah. Therefore, Colossians 3.3 3 says, for you have died, and your life is hid in him. So therefore, you're dead to the things of the flesh. You have to really Quit seeking God and, and being God minded and go after the things of faith. Well, I think I'm right and get wrong. Yeah, that's dead to your thought. <laughs> you make God thoughts, I guarantee you that. That's right. Measure every thought to the obedience of the Lord Jesus right. Christ. Right. And if that thought will line up with His, then throw it out. Right. You want to cuss? Think about what you're about to say. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do damage to people? How I many of you know when you right. curse people, it's not just saying words that we call curse words. They're words that can condemn anybody for anything they do or downspeak them on any level. That's cursing them. A lot of, we, a lot of us need to curse people all the time. But we're against cursing. Well, why are you doing it then? I'm not doing it. Yes, you are. When you call my sorry, that's sorry thing. No, I'm never called them sorry. Well, if I said, that sorry guy out there, I'm well, never called that, that guy out there sorry. You call him sorry. What the heck? You just cursed him. Yeah. I'm preaching to me too, honey. <laughs> I'm getting some of this too. It's coming right back at me. I got four fingers going out and one coming back. The biggest one's coming back. Hello. I got, I'm on page two now. I'm hurrying. All right. The fruit of the Spirit belongs to you. The Holy Spirit, according to like I said, among them. First, now look, look in store for we got to hurry through these. Look at this now. I love it. Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Always. Rejoice in the Lord on Sunday morning. For the rest of it. It don't make any difference about what you did about it. Just, you know, just rejoice in the Lord. How always. Every day. Every day? Yeah. You have to do that every day? Yeah, every single day. No, yeah. honey. No, you don't have to do that. You get to do that. God receives your praise and worship Amen. because it's, it's manifested because the joy of all the inside of you. You lift your hands and say, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Praise God. Sometimes I'm driving down the road. I just pray in the spirit. I'm just going, and I know people say, What do you think I do? And I have already one hand up, and I'm going to have to have one hand Praise God. Hell, I do it. I'm going to have to think. People say, I'm waving somebody. I've done it for the day. Just wave it. You don't know. We have to get your hand down. We'll talk to you anyway. Rejoice in the Lord always. This word rejoice. This word rejoice here means, uh, in the Greek, this word, let's see if I got it down there. Uh, I don't know. No, probably. Go to Isaiah 61. We'll catch you on down. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, this is a prophetic word spoken by the, the prophet Isaiah. And he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted, send me to blind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to the prisoners. And verse 2 said, To proclaim the faithful year of the Lord and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn. And verse 3 said, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, Christians, giving them a garland to the ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. That's, our, that's what we're looking for right there. The word gladness, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the mantle of praise instead of the spirit of fainting, fainting so they will be called uh, oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. If you feel sad, if you feel upset, if you feel just, how many of you ever had a, a home on day? You know what a home on day is? Home, oh, oh. Every day. That's not home on day. How many of them have more in your lap? Two bucks. Three, four. Not allowed you, really. Right. Fine. Because he said he would give you a garment of praise. Amen. King James called for a spirit of heaviness. Right. I tell people all the time, when you're going through something, you just, you're just worn out of you. just have blown out of all to do. I'm just I'm struggling. All of a sudden, just get off somewhere and begin to worship and praise the Lord. Amen. Wow. He said, put on the garment of praise. And it won't be long. I told the ladies one time, she said, I don't have any place my house, to, you know, my family's here, and I can't do that. I said, Matt, can I ask you a question? And it's not, I'm not trying to be perfect. She said, Why? I said, Do you have a bathroom? She said, Yes, I do. I said, Then you'll sit on your commode and, and worship the Lord. She said, Really? I said, Yes. And so she did. She went in there and she called back about 15 minutes later. And she was really a mess when I started talking to her. Call her back about 15 minutes. She said, I did what you said, and she said, every bit of it is gone. Amen. I said, you know why? She said, why? I said, because it's the word of God, and he's true to his word. Amen. That's an Old Testament principle that will work for us today. <clears throat> the Lord. Start praising the Lord. Start just worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord God. You stop. Well, I don't feel like it. Ain't got nothing to do with feelings. Right. It has to do with obedience. That's right. Christians need to separate obedience from feel good. Right. You don't you don't live Christianity by feeling. Right. Right. I said, right. get over it. You're to the bridge and get over it. You'll be all right. On the left side, because we're going to show you the bridge. Right. Let me tell you something. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Let me tell you something. I knew that we was having a church split in our church out right now. I knew we was having a, going to have a church split. I knew it. And so I walked out back and for two hours. I walked to the property in the back of the church, praying in the spirit. Praise and worship the Lord. Now we still have it. Lord said, That's it. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. That's okay. He said, But you don't have to be sad about it. Amen. It's because I'm going to tell you what you're going to say. He told me verbatim what everybody was going to say. And after it was all we said, uh, He said, Now I want you to hold no bitterness, no resentment toward anybody. I just lost half the church. And you don't want me to be there. Have you ever lost half the church? <laughs> Are you out here ever of mine? I lost my son. The most precious offering I had to give you. He died because of your sin, not because of his, but because of yours. Now don't tell me. I don't know. Hello. All right, next period. Uh, well, I 
faith, and I got to add this to you. This was prophetic for the New Testament because God knew that we were going to have some down times in our lives. And that's the reason He told us to rejoice. That is, have joy all the time. Even if you do feel bad. Oh, my. Well, if your car quits, or your wife gets on you about something, or your husband don't like the food that you picked, you can't look at him and say, but if you don't like it, go find me something else to eat, big boy. This one I fixed. Now suck it up. That sounds about right. But you got to do that in love. <laughs> Fine to add it. I mean, just suck it up. You'll be all right. <laughs> you know, you know, how do y'all know how to put sugar on top of sugar? I do. I do it all the time. Do you do that? I do. I'm okay. good at it. We're going to want to All right, here we go. Romans 15, 13. Yeah. God of hope, of all joy, and peace. In believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at this. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. I'm believing. God, I'm, believing. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a struggle by trying to believe some of this stuff. And I know what that's what the book says, but I'm having a hard time believing it. He said, Look here. God will abound you in hope. He'll give you the joy and peace that's already there. That's in you. But look here. You have to call it out. God, I am not going to worry about this because you said I, I didn't have the world's peace. I got your peace. Amen. And God, Jesus even slept in a storm. <laughs> have y'all ever been out in a boat on rough water? Nope. Been there afraid of that there. We've been to Lake Lake with our white caps. In a little boat, not a big boat, a little boat. Oh, Bill Gaughan took Bill Gaughan one time. I told somebody, I said, I, I'll use you to crash about here. But his bottom part grabbed the seat and wouldn't let go. <laughs> <laughs> and he held on to those who couldn't swim. And my wife was with She said, Tom, get this thing to the shore and right now. I don't think she wanted to get wet either. Because we had a shower about three or four days before, so she didn't need nothing. When you're thinking you're going to take a shower tonight, somebody help me. Hello. Is anybody in your line? No, I think it's over. Here we go. Next one. Uh, peace will lead you because, joy and peace will lead you because of believing. We overcome you. This, as because you have been believing, then you can abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit Himself. If you got hope, joy brings on more hope. Am I, am I right? Am I reading into that, or is that true? Is that what it says? <coughs> Are you thinking I'm taking too much liberty with that scripture or not? Okay, I'm going to have to say it did then. <coughs> you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, because joy and peace. They're in you because the Holy Spirit lives in you, and He'll release that to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Jude, Hebrews chapter eleven one talks about hope. We're going to just get that. We we'll go to Jude twenty four. Now, to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of His glory, blameless with great joy. Now, this this joy here is our own church and all of this word here is A G A L L I L, whatever how you pronounce it, powerful. And it means to greatly rejoice, especially in song and dance. When I went to a Southern Baptist church when I was a little boy, that our church didn't believe in dancing. And I don't know what they do now. A lot of churches don't believe in dancing. But this Bible tells us this scripture right here in uh, the book of Jude, verse 24, he said, 
and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. And the word great joy means to do it with song and dancing. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen people. We had an old man in our church back years ago. His name was Darrell. Do you remember him? He was 67 years old when he got saved. 67 years old when he got saved. And when he got saved, he got filled with the Spirit. God I prayed for him, and he got filled with the Spirit right away. And so what happened to him was he would come to church. Now he drove from Columbus, Indiana to our church and now would never miss a meeting. That's an hour away. He drove every Sunday morning on Wednesday night. He came to church. And he had a little place he always sat on the aisle there. And who's just as soon as the, the piano fired up or the guitar or whatever we had, uh, he jumped out in the aisle and lift his hands up and start dancing and praising and worshiping the Lord. All then in Fraser, all the time. He never ever missed. And you would never think the man never had any downtime. If you did, you, you couldn't read it on him. Because he was happy, he was the same all the time. Every time you saw him, he was exactly the same. That's what Christians ought to be all the time. And so I asked him, what do you do? And he said, you know what? He said, I got a late, I got a late start again at this thing. He said, I got to make up for lost time. <laughs> so he didn't care what people thought, and I don't care whatever church he went into, and he's been thrown out of some of them. He went into the Methodist church one Sunday, I was out of town, and he went into the Methodist church, and they started abusing. He got on out, and he started dancing. The usher came and said, sir, you can't do that here. He said, I don't see enough to keep in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> After the service over, they said, Please don't ever come back again. Wow. I don't care if he went, he knew what people thought about him. He's 68 years old. He do not care what you think about him, but I do care what my father thinks about me. I'm going to have the joy of the Lord, and I'm going to dance and jump up and down and praise and worship the Lord. I'm practicing for heaven. <laughs> Somebody hear what I'm talking to you about. I'm practicing for heaven. This, this is the house some people go. <laughs> oh, man, somebody's going to look at me shortly. First time I raise my hands, I feel the Holy Spirit. I've never done it in the Baptist church, I guarantee you that. But I'll leave what they do. Church I was in, right? Let me tell you what I did. I went to Thorne Gospel meeting one night, W.R. Rogers. And they said, Well, just lift your hand and forget to worship Lord. Yeah. I was thinking about it an old thing. <laughs> I lifted my hands up and started praying. What's the main thing you're going to do, baby? But I looked around to see if anybody was there that I knew. <laughs> Before I did Security cat, you don't know. <laughs> oh, this is the last scripture. First Peter 4 1 says, And through him, man, and though you have not seen him, you love him, and though you have not, you love him, and though you have not seen him, man, but believe in him. And you greatly rejoice with the joy inexpressible and full of glory. Greatly rejoice is the same word that I just told you about. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. I'm going to stand right here for the next two minutes. Great joy. It's a joy bigger than no one. What happened to you? Was a bigger thing. It's not just a norm. It's a great praise God. And you know, my sons, when I found out that what happened to that boy, I said, God, I'm so thankful that you did not let the devil kill my son. Because my sons will come into it one day. 
He might have you on. I told him that to the face one day. I said, you will come in this thing. You and your wife both. And you might have heel marks all the way. There might be black marks behind you. But you're going to come in. And you're going to serve God. Because I didn't pour all this time in you for nothing. And you're going to play for the kingdom. Amen. And you're going to be on a praise and worship team somewhere. All that stuff you've got to do. You're, you're going to do it, buddy. Oh, no, no, no. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and then 4.13, 4.13, 4.13 said, no, you, but to the degree that you, but to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice <coughs> in exaltation. Oh, my. Oh, I've just had a bad day. I'm suffering for Jesus. You don't know what suffering is. You don't know what suffering is? Go to some of these third world countries. And don't you go to Christians. They have to leave God for food for every day. Yeah. And we throw more away than they eat. Yep. America wastes more food in one day than most third world countries in the True statement. We're wasteful people. Yes. We're kind of unsupplied. And I'm so sorry that that governor of California don't recognize that. He don't know what he's done. And he don't have any idea what he's done. He's about to. Amen. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'm looking at his shoes. Look here. I will be walking close to it. I will, I will be in the same group with him. I'm going to tell you something. That's the things of ground. When you start trying to show it. God's people down. Shut the church down. Shut the praise and worship off from the Father God. That's a dangerous place for people to be. Yes, it is. The green person there's no. There's an answer for that. In God's God. Thank God he does. Well, I hope you will understand about joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength and my strong. <laughs> it's what I look forward to every day of my life. Oh, I so appreciate it. 